okay. Welcome more gamers, my name is Doug with 2 Plus Tough, and last week I did a video called Mastering Your Army Fast, which I talked about uh, different ways of creating remember me lists and things like that, giving you the most education per game so you really understand what your army does. And part of the description I put in there was that you should go online to the Honest Wargamer, TG Forum, anything like that. I'll put those links in the description down below, I'll remember it this time and get a list from online or inspiration from a list and stick with it. Now, after I posted that video, there was someone in the comments who kind of pushed back on me and said uh, that it was the net listing that was bad for the game. That is that taking competitive lists that you find online and bring them to a local game store is a surefire way to kind of ruin your local hobby group with excessive amounts of competition and things like that. I'm paraphrasing, I'm trying to get a sense of what they meant because what they actually said wasn't too kind, but I'm trying to get an idea of why someone would feel that way. That being said, I do see their point. Uh, I think over competitive focus has, well, it's one of the reasons that I think, frankly, Privateer Press is in the gutter right now uh, because they weren't encouraging other things. I also think that when people take things too seriously, new folks don't have a, really have a foothold to get in and learn very well because they get crushed too darn fast. We have a local player who plays 40K who has that similar issue. He's hard to learn with because he crushes you turn three and can't ease up off the gas pedal. That's a bummer. He's not fun to play with. Fun being the keyword there. He's a great guy, enjoys company, not fun. And so, uh, in a game sense, you know what I mean? But the point is, I get where that comment comes from. I relate to it. It's why I stopped playing War Machine and Hordes because people were so hyper-focused uh, on competition that it really, it, it killed my joy. So assuming that that comment comes from a very good place, which is a, what I assume on most things, uh, what I want to do is kind of offer an alternate idea. When I say go online and uh, look at netlists, Here's the thing. The point of that video was to say if you're just starting the game com completely or you're new to a faction, you already have so much to absorb. Maybe you should try limiting the number of things that are weighing on your brain. One of those things is list design. There's a lot of variables. People don't understand what these uh, things called a stat line mean and how they work in you know uh, in, together, really. But then also what that translates to on the tabletop. Because when you start playing, Maybe you don't realize eight, how dramatic an eight inch move model is compared to a six inch move model until you actually see it on the tabletop. It's a huge difference. And so having those kinds of things drawn out for you by someone else who does have context is really invaluable. So my idea in the last video of saying that was to say, this is one more thing that you can take off your mental plate. That was the whole focus of that video. How can we declutter our brains so we can maximize learning every game? However, when you're moving into anything further than that, what I really do like to encourage is not just learn that something is good, but learn why it's good. Let's take a new person's journey. It doesn't matter if you're new to the game or new to a faction. Uh, I want you to do the things that I talked about in my last video about mastering your faction. I want you to have a remember me list. I want you to be memorizing stat lines so it comes very quickly. And I want you to be learning the game through the context of your army. When I feel like you've reached a point, I'm gonna start saying, what else is good in your army, right? I want you to explore it. Don't just stick with that 2000 point list once you're comfortable with the army. You don't have, you're not locked in for the rest of your life, but just say, what else looks cool? What else do you wanna paint? What else um, draws your eye in terms of like the actual model design, that kind of stuff, and just start pushing people in other directions. The reason I do this is because exploring parts of factions that no one else plays feels stinking good. In fact, the idea of like people, I think generally want to be unique. Uh, I don't think people like the idea of, well, I'm just doing what everyone else does, right? That feels lame on some level. Uh, I think people want to be special, unique snowflakes when it comes to list design, their paint schemes, that kind of stuff. And I don't, I don't think this conversation is any different. What I do think is that a good firm starting point is where they need to begin to begin that journey. The real value of netlists, besides taking the mental burden of list design off of your brain, is not just learning that things are good, this list is the LVO winner, for example, but learning why things are good. That is the real meat and value. And the reason I suggest Honest Wargamer, I don't frequent that site a whole lot. I've been there several times, but I'm not like a constant, you know, adding things to it. 
The truth of the matter is, the reason it's valuable is because there's little boxes there to write in what the list actually does, what it's trying to achieve, um, possible shortcomings, that kind of thing. That's the information that new people need. I suggest going to lists online that look fun. And remember when I said that video, I didn't just point out competitive lists. Things that just sound cool. Three Bloodthirsters sounds cool. It's not competitive, but it sounds cool. Um, that kind of stuff. Like There are people trying to make things work in unique ways all the time. Go explore them. And you will find as you use these lists at your local scene, uh, what things are good and what things are bad. And more importantly, you'll learn why. And so then as you go to expand your collection from the net list that you got into a full bodied collection, we'll call that, where you can try different things here and there, different synergies, uh, different types of troops, whether it's chaff or heavy hitters, you'll have the knowledge of what makes things good in your army. For example, if you are, say, wanting to learn how to play Fire Slayers, and I would just say to you, go online, look at many Fire Slayer lists and see what catches your eye. And you might have the three Magma Droth list, you might have the no Magma Droth list, there's all kinds of different designs anywhere between there. But inevitably, you're going to find many, many lists have at least one block of 30 Volkite Berserkers. In fact, that's going to be such a reoccurring theme. I want you to ask yourself, well, why are there so many blocks of Volkite Berserkers? reason simply put being is that in large numbers they get a save after the save next to a banner bear their their battlesmith banner bear dude um, they get a reroll save so they have a five up rerollable and then a four up save after that so it's incredibly durable for being a bunch of little dudes so the point being is after you're, as you're exploring those lists online you're not just copy and pasting things that you see have won awards and things like that. Fire Slayer is not a super winning army right now. However, what you're doing is seeing themes over and over again, and you can ask, why is that good? And that's the real meat of going to an online database for lists. As I said, the core intended audience of that last video was new folks, either new to the game or new to the faction. And you don't have the context when you look at a unit to see why is it good. For example, if you'd go to Beast of Chaos, You'll often see lists that have just randomly 10 Ungor. You're like, what are 10 Ungor going to do? They're going to do nothing. And you're right, they're going to do nothing. However, they're going to do nothing right next to a Herdstone and get chucked inside of it and sacrificed to summon more units. And that's something you don't understand if you don't understand the faction. You have to see that a bunch of times, ask questions. Why do you have 10 Ungor standing there doing nothing? Again, if you don't understand how the herdstone works, how the summoning works, how the lists work, the army functions, you have no context to understand those things. So imagine a new person coming to Age of Sigmar being like, wow, I got these Stormcasts in Soul Wars, and you're trying to understand these units, how you can build from there. You don't really understand the synergies, how they interplay with one another. There's a lot to register. However, if you went to an online thing and said, hey, this is where I started, where do I go next? People can point you to lists that are largely based on Soul Wars. That's exactly the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. To say that everyone has to trial and error develop their armies or collections on their own uh, kind of invalidates the whole point of having an online community, first of all. But secondly, uh, what it really does is greatly increases the chances of bad experiences because if you invest a lot of money into a unit or something like that that doesn't give you the play experience that you want, you can easily become very disgruntled about it and walk away. We want new players making smart decisions that they don't regret, enjoying every game experience, and then having things built in such a way that they can learn them incrementally. I can learn what the game's about through a tutorial. I can pick an army based on what I like the look of. I can take a list online that seems to do what the army's doing that I think I want to own, and then build from there. And so those are the kind of concepts that I was talking about when I say go online and grab a list. And just one little thing I want to tack on here at the end is the fear of things becoming far too competitive. As, as seriously as I do take that, I'm not minimizing the um, intent behind that content, the comment. What I will say though is that the people who, if you are new to the game and you're like, I play Magic the Gathering and I just want to win, want to be competitive, that's cool. Really glad you're here. Um, what I would say to that is going and taking the top number one winning LVO list or at the Las Vegas Open, it's a big tournament, or um, Adepticon, any of those big conventions where they have very competitive, you know, the ideal competitive environment. You're not going to win with those a whole lot. Or I bet you'll lose to some really unexpected things. For example, this is really what I'm getting at, uh, is 
the environment that makes those lists thrive. The people who win consistently at those things build their lists around a certain meta that exists at the top tables. People who play at LVO, oh sorry, the armies that you see at LVO are not the ones you're gonna see in your local game night. And this works both ways. One, you could come in your local game store and dominate and no one wanna play with you. That's fine. It's easy to have no friends. Or you get taken out by something that you never thought would win because you don't see it at the top tables at LVO. Let me give you an example. So Jack over at Reeling Ones plays Slanesh. He does extremely well. He uh, layers his debuffs uh, very intelligently to crippling effect. And so even though nationally Slanesh, the keyword Slanesh for an army, doesn't do well at all, I have never beat it. I played it multiple times. Uh, I think, well, actually not true. Maybe I beat it once with Fire Slayers, maybe on Scenario. But generally speaking, he cuts through us like a knife through butter because he's so aggressive and he's so intelligent about the way he uses his troops. And so, like, again, you can see a disparity. Nothing on a national level, cripplingly good <laughs> at a local level. And so even if you take your LVO winner list and bring it to a game store, you could get totally kicked to the curb by something that you never saw coming because every list has a blind spot and you don't know how to run that list. The person who made it did. Which kind of leads to my last point, which is even if you grab the best winningest uh, list for your faction, doesn't mean you know how to play it right. You have a lot to learn. And in that learning experience, you as a new player to the game or, or a faction will evolve and grow with it. So I do encourage it. I encourage it for narrative people. Go on there and find lists because people post fun lists too. It's not just competitive crap. Um, go find something that looks fun, for, uh, preferably for me with Beast uh, of Chaos. I'm looking at lists that have a wide variety of units because I want to paint different things. So I want lists that have Dragon Ogres and Minotaurs and Gores and Bestigores and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you are doing something more competitive, there are lists for those too. Ones that focus on mostly Zangor stuff, just to give you a heads up. And um, you can find whatever you want. Internet's a big place. We're not all cutthroat people. People post lists for fun narrative things and you should go explore those too. So anyway, this is just more of a fun ramble stream of conscious video. I just wanted to address that comment because it's it's a, a stigma that I see quite a bit but I don't, I, it's not true. I was gonna say, I don't understand why. I do understand why. And I was one of those people when it came to War Machine and Hordes. But I don't think, I think GW has put enough effort into creating fun and engaging narrative stuff that people, generally speaking, unless you're really searching for a top-notch competitive thing, aren't gonna do that. Especially because a lot of those things have hefty monetary investments. Like, if you're gonna, if you want to really win right now, you have to go buy an ungodly amount of Daughters of Cain stuff. <laughs> like, it's unreasonably expensive. Um, and that's how you win. But then it's going to change. It's just going to change. So, I don't know. Um, I think netlists are fine. I think they're a great way for getting new people a, a direction for where to start purchasing stuff and where to start building and experimenting on what's good and what's not and learning for themselves and putting their faction and their units in context of an army uh, I think it's absolutely wonderful. But I want to hear your thoughts. Leave in the comments down below. Yeah, if you say something particularly engaging or make good points, of course, doing it in a clean and polite manner. I'll pin it to the top. I always like pinning the most useful things for new players and stuff like that. We have a lot of new folks. So go ahead and leave your comments down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Line up your fantasy armies in battle in the land of the dead or on an alien planetoid for your sci-fi games. Either way, the Deadlands gaming map from 2 Plus Stuff is just the thing to bring your battlefields to life. Don't let your painted models go to waste by playing on felt or damage them with a rough textured board. The Deadlands gaming map provides a beautiful theater of war for your models while being made of a thick, soft neoprene to protect them from damage. Rolled up nicely in its free carrying case that you get, you'll be ready to bring the drama of war wherever you go. Head over to 2PlusTuff.com or in the link down below for more details. The Deadlands Gaming Mat. Bring your games to life. Currently only available in the US, but coming overseas very shortly.